This is the Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Show with head coach Fred Hoiberg. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Wardo back to CJ, shoots the three, it's on the way, got it! Holy cow! Huge, humongous, bang a rang three! Man, to McGowan's coming to it, dribble weave action up top, Burge down inside to a wide open, and a dunk by Walker! Oh man, did they snooker Ohio State! Webster comes the other way. Looks, uh, surveys the court, gives to Tomanaga, steps into a three, it's on the way. Got it! Bang! Arang! Tomanaga hits the three. In the left corner with the ball is McGowan's. McGowan's a couple of dribbles, working on Sotos down inside. Eduardo layup good to tie the game at 59. How about that, Oscar fans? How do you like those athletes? Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome to our weekly show. This time, the head coach in studio with us for an hour. If you want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400. That works as a call or a text, and I know a lot of you like to text, so if you want to fire your question that way, we certainly can pass that along to the coach. Oscar's coming off of a heartbreaker last night, an overtime loss to the 13th-ranked Buckeyes of Ohio State. i got to imagine, Coach, that's, that's more like what you want to see out of your team, the effort and the style of play that you got last night. Yeah, I thought we, we competed at a very high level, Greg, and, and that's obviously what you have to do on a nightly basis in this league. And, you know, I thought our physicality was exactly where we needed it to be. And you look at the, uh, you know, very important statistics of paint points, uh, getting to the free throw line, uh, second chance points, we had an advantage in every one of those. We had them up by 10 in the paint, um, got them to the free throw line, uh, made more than they attempted. And actually, the uh, second chance points were even. So, you know, in points off turnovers, we outscored them. And when you, ge- when you win those stats, generally you win the game. You know, unfortunately, they got extremely hot from the three point line. Uh, you know, this is a team, we played the numbers, and it's a, uh, a team that plays to the paint to their bigs, or six in the nation, in throwing the ball to their posts. And we did a great job of taking that away. EJ Liddell, one of the top players in the country, uh, goes two for 14. I thought collectively we played very well on him, starting with Lat. Uh, CJ did a terrific job giving up a lot of size uh, on him and fronting him and our backside was there and on point and then we put Derek on him late when he made a couple uh, plays in overtime uh, kicking it out to threes so we could guard him more one on one Uh, you know Key who's been a load at 30 against Duke I thought we did a solid job on him as well and then uh, you know big Joey Brunk coming off the bench transfer from Indiana so um, you know tip your hat to Ohio State you know that freshman came in and, and had a uh, career night, scoring 35 points. Unfortunately, got going early uh, in that game. Uh, but again, as I said to the players after the game, if we play with that type of effort and intensity, we're going to have a chance to win a lot of games. Key and Liddell only combined for 17 points. I think if, it, if we'd have told you that before the game, you're probably thinking, we win. I thought I would have said we, yeah. we were in great shape, especially as, as we switched our coverage and made the adjustment to guard them one-on-one and still have that type of success. And, um, you know, offense got off to a little bit of a sluggish start, but I really liked how we moved it as that game went on. I thought Derek was phenomenal all game long, flying all over the floor, taking charges, uh, diving on the floor, getting extra possessions, getting deflections and steals. Uh, it was really good. And Eduardo gave us solid minutes as well when Derek was getting a breather. Uh, you know, so again, it, it, I, I feel for our guys. You know, I thought we deserved it because I thought we were the harder playing team last night. You outscored them in the paint by 10. You mentioned Derek. He had his third double-double of the year, 15 points, 10 rebounds. Looked like he got more touches. Is that is that by design to get him the ball more? Yeah, again, that, that's kind of the uh, the system that we put in is designed to get Derek much more involved. And, you know, I've, I've run the five-out spread motion offense uh, for a lot of years, really going back to my days at Iowa State, and uh, just felt that this personnel uh, was good early, uh, was good in the preseason, but we hit a snag, and I just didn't like the way things were flowing out there. So wanted to get Derek more in the post, put it in at a time where we had some practices in front of us. Unfortunately, the first game, uh, K-State, Derek was out for the two days before with a little bit of a knee tendonitis. Uh, but now he's gotten healthy, and with a break, uh, when the guys got back, we had about a week uh, to really add to it, to add to the package, and, and I thought it was the best it's looked last night. All right, take me through the last 10 seconds. They, the, the foul happens, they go to the line. What, what did you want to happen for the last 10 seconds? Yeah, you, you, I thought Kobe played great defense um, on the drive to the basket, did a good job, verticality, straight up, uh, made him jump through him. We missed uh, the block out with Liddell coming in and going over top of us. Uh, committing the foul, not giving him the easy layup, making him earn it at the free throw line, uh, made the first. I tried to ice him uh, by calling the timeout, 
Uh, again, All-American type player, stepped up, made a big shot. Uh, we had a play call that had a couple different options to it. It was our last timeout, so we had Bryce coming off a cross screen to try to get him downhill going uh, to the rim. Uh, second option was Derek flashing back, flipping back to Kobe, which is the option that we got uh, where he got into the paint. He got the shot up, created the help. Derek got an offensive rebound. Unfortunately, they made a heck of a play at the rim uh, with the block shot, and that's what sent the game to overtime. Well, I mean, yeah, you got two looks at it right down there near close. That's that's not bad at all. And you, a lot of times, maybe you get a foul call in that situation because you're down inside. Maybe you get a hack on Yeah, and I think that's what Kobe was trying to do when you look back at it. He's trying to jump into the body. Um, you know, they did a good job similar to what Kobe did on the other end by staying vertical. Uh, you know, and then Derek went up and Brown came out of nowhere uh, to block that shot. I thought Derek had a pretty much point blank uh, put back. But again, give them credit for making a heck of a play at the rim. Yeah, I scored him off your bench. And I know CJ did a nice job for you, but Kobe hit some shots. You got to like having a little production coming in off the bench. Yeah, very important that, that you get that bench uh, production. Eduardo got a couple baskets uh, down there as well. I thought our pick and rolls as the game went on were really good. I thought, again, Derek in the pocket has been phenomenal, especially against teams lately who have iced us. Uh, what we really try to do is create a pocket so as soon as Derek sees the feet of the guard pop up, he's no longer a screener and he gets into the pocket. Uh, and he's done a great job making plays. And, and again, that's something else with this system is getting Derek at the elbows. Uh, we ran a couple little actions for him, getting him the ball at the nail with uh, splits going on on both sides. And that's a good time for him uh, to probe and create and try to get to the basket in a one on one situation. And that's where he got a couple of his baskets as well. But Derek in the pocket against that ice coverage uh, has been very good, where he's been able to either score it or spray it out to that opposite corner, which a lot of times has been KSA or, or uh, CJ. 402-413-2400, the number to dot us up with a comment or question. Time to tell you that Dorothy Lynch, home style and light and lean dressing, endless flavorabilities. Alonzo Verge does not play really at all. He didn't play at all in overtime. What about his not being on the floor for you late in the game? It really was more about what Kobe was doing out there. And... Um, you know, looking back at it, uh, you always look back at what you could have done. And, um, you know, I just thought at that time, Kobe was the one that had it going. We were playing through Bryce a lot and obviously playing through Derek. Uh, Kobe had made a couple shots, and, and that was the reason that we went with him down the stretch. Kobe uh, had such a great game for you against Creighton back in November. Good to see him splash a couple of threes. I think it's been a while since Kobe kind of maybe found a little bit of a rhythm with that jumper. Yeah, it, it had. And, you know, you look at our last two games, we hit 15 threes against Kennesaw before the break, and we ended up making eight uh, last night. Missed, I thought, a couple of good looks early uh, in that game. Missed a couple late where they went under on a dribble handoff. We just, uh, just didn't knock him down. But it was good to see Kobe uh, hit some threes. We need that. We need that type of production. We need that ball to go in the basket behind the line. Yeah, you, you, you really got, and Trevor Lake's got some minutes for you, and I know he's been kind of earning those minutes, what you've seen in him the last few games. Yeah, you know, it started in the Kennesaw game, and, you know, mm -hmm. again, as we've talked about, Trevor has missed a couple games with a shoulder uh, that he had operated on in the offseason, wasn't available for a couple of those games, but, you know, to have him uh, back in there against Kennesaw, he hit a huge one right before the half, which gave us momentum going into the break, uh, hit two of them in the first half in that game, uh, and then we really opened it up. Uh, from there. And then last night, got in there, had one look. I uh, thought it was really good. He had good rhythm, good stroke on it. It just didn't go in. You, because you played on the 22nd, you didn't play until the 2nd. That's a pretty nice little layoff. But man, it comes at you hard now. You Last night, you play Wednesday, you play Saturday, you play next Tuesday. It's a lot of games in about nine days. Yeah, it, it's, it's going to, in, in the teams we're playing, starting with this game on Wednesday, uh, going on the road, playing a team that's as hot as anybody right now uh, in our league with Michigan State. And then we're going to stay on the road. Uh, we're going to fly directly into uh, New Jersey that night, play Rutgers on Saturday in an afternoon game. Uh, got a quick turnaround at home against Illinois and then finish off that stretch with a fun game at Purdue. So it's, yeah. it's a gauntlet right now. And then we come back with a, a sh another short turnaround with a uh, rematch against Indiana. By not having class right now, does that allow you to stay on the road? Does it does, exactly. Yeah. If, yeah, if we had class, we would definitely come back. And, you know, but just it would, it would be very short. It would be a short night. You sleep, you get up, you practice, and then you'd have to leave that next, uh, that next morning. So, yeah, we, we felt that it was a good opportunity to stay on the road, to bond a little bit uh, with our team, uh, get some good practice opportunities. Uh, we'll be at Rutgers the first day, and then we're actually going to practice at the uh, NBA Players Association building in New York City on, uh, on Friday. Now, do, because you're between semesters, do the rules loosen up? Are you allowed more time with your team right now? Yeah, I mean, not? You, yeah, you can have time. Um, you still have to have the day off. Okay. So, yeah. Um, but as far as the time, um, you know, it's, listen, it's 20 hours. When you get into season, very rarely are you going to use that full 20 hours. But we, we used a lot of it uh, that first week we got back. Like I said, we had that four-hour day. 
uh, followed that up with another long one. And, you know, I really thought it was an opportunity for us to get back to the basics, to really get good, hard, physical type training camp practices. Uh, and I thought that helped pay off, helped our team, and, help, and it paid off for us last night with a physical type performance. Buckle up and put the phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Head coach with us, 402. 413-2400, the number to dial us up with a comment or question. Only eight turnovers last night. That that has to please you because Ohio State plays pretty good defense and to only turn the ball over eight times in an overtime game has to be stand out when you look at this thing. Well, and five of those early. We had five, I think, at the yeah. first media timeout, including one where Derek uh, pretty much stole the ball from Alonzo and then threw it to him in the backcourt. <laughs> right. So that was that was one of those. And then Lat, uh, you know, we didn't get the wolf call, which is kind of the uh, international <laughs> or universal rule coming for behind, yeah, yeah. coming from behind. We didn't get that called and, and again they splashed a three on us on that play so you know turnovers offensive rebounds transition those are the threes we absolutely can control and we have to take away but you're absolutely right Greg after those first uh, initial turnovers we did a phenomenal job that stretch I think we had one turnover all the way until about the three minute mark in the second half after the five early ones that's what we need to play uh, that's what gave us a chance to win last night yeah it was impressive to watch you know I, I think you probably could tell it the energy in the building really ramped up in the second half I think the folks appreciated what they saw they saw your team really giving maximum effort your team getting into a good rhythm and flow offensively, and I think I think the folks who were at the game last night really saw that and appreciated well, that. And, and that's one thing. Listen, we've got a great building, we've got a great fan base, as good as any uh, in the country, and we need to give them something to get excited about. And I thought last night, uh, again, the effort that we gave, and you know, listen, the two games that have been the outliers were Michigan and Auburn, as we've talked about. You know, our team wasn't right. We just were not physically right for those games. We got exposed by two really good teams. Um, you know, wanted to get back to that physical type brand of basketball that we're going to have to play uh, throughout the rest of the Big Ten Conference. And, you know, the way teams are shooting against us right now, we're going to have to play one-on-one. -on -one. Our guys are going to have to uh, find a way, uh, you know, to grind out possessions, try to make them make tough shots. Uh, but we're giving up too many threes. So we're going to have to find a way to play better one-on-one -on -one post defense. And I thought last night, again, our guys really battled and competed against that. We're not going to shut teams out down there, uh, but we're going to ask a lot of our bigs uh, to go down there play one-on-one -on -one so we can stay home more in shooters. You were in here last week, and I think we were kind of nervous about where this virus was going a lot. I think we had 66 teams were on pause. Do you feel better now? What's, and you're talking to other coaches probably in our league right now. What, what's everybody feeling like? I just, you know, all you can do, Greg, is worry about what you can control. We, we have no control over this virus right now. Obviously, you can make good decisions as good as you possibly can. You can still get it. Uh, you know, it sounds like as transmissible as this new vi uh, variant is. Uh, you know, you just got to hope and pray that it doesn't affect your team. We have been hit with a virus probably, you know, in, in a lot of cases. Uh, with a lot more symptoms, for, especially for younger people like our team. And uh, it did affect our team, the viral infection that went through us, not non-COVID, uh, you know, influenza that went through our team. Our guys had some very uh, serious symptoms with that. So, you know, it did affect us for about a week uh, where we weren't, weren't able to practice and, and uh, you know, missed a lot of guys uh, during that stretch. But, you know, right now, and talking to Chris Holtman last night, who went through their team, they hadn't played a game since December 11th. Uh, you know, once it hits one guy, it's it's tough it just you know just wipes you out like it did with our team last year once it hit one guy and then they hit the roommate then it hit the next room and it was just right down the line so you know is it going to happen i hope not but you know there's there's certainly a chance sounds like the league's better right now illinois looks like they're going to play tomorrow yeah. northwestern had an issue they played yesterday and the buckeyes are back so maybe knock on wood Maybe we're going to put this behind us. I hope so. I, I really do. And, you know, I, I don't know if we'll ever get back to normal. Um, you know, you just got to do the best job you can, try to go out there. Uh, you know, I've talked about this numerous times. Our team is fully vaccinated. Uh, the, several of them have gotten the booster uh, shot. Our whole staff is boosted. So, you know, just got to try to do the best you can and, and uh, you know, hope it stays away. You're going to Michigan State. They came out over the weekend and said for anybody walking in their building, you have to show proof of vaccination or a negative test. I think within the last 72 hours, is that getting, does that stuff get conveyed to you guys? Uh, it does because sure of the guests. Do. Yeah, I've got a, a former college teammate that now lives in Michigan. Uh, he's in Grand Rapids and he wants tickets. And I said, you know, that gave the names. They said, okay, they need proof of vaccination yeah. if you're, I think, 12 and under. So, or sorry, 12 and over, uh, you know, to be able to get into the building. So, yeah, that's, that's how I found out about it uh, was today with that. Yeah. 
All right, uh, our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance, buy online at woodhouse.com. 402-413-2400, the number to be a part of the program with the coach. We're back with more coming up. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance. All without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. This year, fire off your holiday catering wish list to Famous Dave's. For smaller gatherings, get their legendary pit barbecue and Famous Sides to go. Fixing for a larger group? There's delivery and setup. Or go all out with full service where Famous Dave's catering team handles all the details while you savor all the glory. While you're at it, get your mitts on a $10 reward card when you purchase a $50 gift card. Holiday catering and gifting by Famous Dave's. Because when there's smoke and fire, there's joyful and triumph. Located in Lincoln and Bellevue and Famous Dave's. This winter season, don't just get ready, drive ready with a new truck or SUV from Woodhouse. Easily tackle the snow-covered streets and holiday road trips with the whole family with our selection of the top truck and SUV brand lineups. Plus, our team is ready to get you the capability you need, the comfort you want, and the tech to keep the kids entertained. Visit one of our 17 locations and win the season with a new truck or SUV from Woodhouse. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. This year, fire off your holiday catering wish list of Famous Dave's. For smaller gatherings, get their legendary pit barbecue and Famous Sides to go. Fixing for a larger group? There's delivery and setup. Or go all out with full service where Famous Dave's catering team handles all the details while you savor all the glory. While you're at it, Get your mitts on a $10 reward card when you purchase a $50 gift card. Holiday catering and gifting by Famous Dave's. Because when there's smoke and fire, there's joyful and triumph. Located in Lincoln and Bellevue and Famous Dave's. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Tis the season to get holiday ready with Ford. But time is running out. It's the final days of the Get Holiday Ready sales event at your Ford dealer. Your last chance to get the best deals of the year on Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks. And only a few more days left to get great offers on any one of our amazing, capable Ford SUVs. Inventory is still arriving daily, but time is running out. Hurry. It's the final days to get holiday ready at your Ford dealer. Best-selling claim based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list called JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. Is your business's data cabling outdated? Do you need help with fiber optic cabling projects? Give Kidwell a call. Kidwell doesn't just help you handle today's demands. They help you see beyond, making sure that every component works in unison to meet the demands of your growing business. Kidwell keeps your connections clearly labeled and organized, maximizes performance, and saves time when any maintenance or service is needed. Don't settle for patchwork quick fixes. Make Kidwell your technology partner. Visit KidwellInc.com. That's KidwellInc.com. 
Hey Husker fans, this is Anne Marie from the Nebraska Beef Council. Just like the big red wins on the court, you can win at the dinner table with great tasting beef. From steaks and roasts to ground beef and kebabs, there are countless ways to create a meal that will have your family cheering for more. Visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com for easy beef recipes, cooking tips, and meal inspirations. Beef, it's what's for dinner in Nebraska. Brought to you by Nebraska's beef producers and their beef checkoff. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. 402-413-2400. The head coach with us for a few more minutes here on our men's basketball show. Huskers getting ready to travel. You probably have your bags packed. You're headed to East Lansing for a Wednesday night game and then off to Piscataway to take on Rutgers on Saturday. Huskers will stay on the road for this one, a little NBA type road trip, not coming home for this one. Yeah, it's um, yeah, a five day trip and you know, go out and, and try to bond on the road. Sometimes uh, you know, your team can come together when uh, you know, you're going through a little streak like this. Um, but yeah, good opportunity to get out and have a couple practices after the Michigan State game um, and to get out and see a couple high school games. Uh, while we're out on the East Coast as well, so good opportunity to get a little recruiting in as well. Let's talk Sparty a little bit. They lost a couple games early, but it looks like they've kind of put some things back together. What about Tom Izzo's team? Yeah, they're they're doing really well. I, obviously, it's a team I know uh, with my son Jack playing there for four years, and um, you know, a program that I've got so much respect for, and especially the way Coach Izzo does it for somebody that has uh, his pedigree and his type of success to be as down to earth and grounded as he is. Uh, you know, it's just a phenomenal person. I'm very thankful my son had a chance to play uh, in that program. I was around uh, for a lot of their Final Four run uh, a couple of years ago. It was great to be there and be a part of that. And, you know, I just think the world of, of everything and the way Tom Izzo runs that team. You know, one thing that's scary is he said this is as good a transition team as he's had. Uh, Max Christie said it's the best shooting freshman that, uh, that he's ever had in his roster. So they've got a lot of talent. Gabe Brown has really stepped up his game. Uh, with a couple of those other guys that have gone on to either the NBA or, or moved on uh, into the coaching ranks. So, you know, it's a team that plays extremely fast. You have to get back. I told our team today, if we're not going to get back in transition, we may as well stay on the bus. We're not going to have any chance uh, to win that game. And then physicality with the rebounding, uh, you know, good to play these two teams first in the league to see what this thing's going to be all about for these next 17 games. Uh, they're going to crash every time. Uh, corner crash a couple years ago at home. A uh, big basket happened late in the game. It was a one-possession game. Uh, Langford comes in, gets an offensive rebound, put back. So you have to be diligent with that for 40 minutes. Understand where your guy is and make sure you go get a good physical uh, cutout with contact. They had quite a battle yesterday. Northwestern pushed them pretty hard. They did prevail. They were losing at halftime. Came back to win that game. You probably already looked at that tape. Yeah, it, it was. Gabe Brown hit a huge shot late in that game. It was a two-point game and rose up, hit a three to put him up five with about uh, 40 seconds left, and then Northwestern cut it back to one possession and missed a really good look uh, at the end, had a three to give them the lead. Uh, Michigan State rebounded and then made their free throws down the stretch. C.J. Wilcher, last night came off the bench. We mentioned him in the opening set with 13 points for you. Really shot it well. He seems like a guy that, Coach, if he gets his first one down, he's pretty dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. And I thought our guys did a good job of finding him. Um, you know, ran a couple actions, whether it was a crack back uh, or, uh, you know, try to get him open on a shake out of the pick and roll. Uh, get him in the opposite corner in that pocket that we talked about earlier. And, you know, CJ rose up to his credit, knocked down uh, some shots. And, you know, he's a big part of this. He's our leading three point shooter by percentage uh, right now. And we need to try to find a way to get he and Casey shots. Uh, you know, Lat, who had a couple in the Kennesaw game, you know, just need to try to get him going early. Uh, you know, and then a couple of those shots that he had late, uh, you know, hopefully be more confident with those. Bryce has made a couple in each of the last two games. Uh, it's been good to see that. Um, you know, and again, as I've talked about before, Greg, I mean, our shooting numbers never would have thought that would be our issue. And, you know, the last two games we've shot it better, mm -hmm. and we're going to have to uh, continue to improve on that uh, if we're going to have a chance in these games. CJ was at Xavier. Tell me how you got him to come to Lincoln. Yeah, uh, you know, it goes back to Matt, who had a relationship with CJ. Uh, CJ's uh, from New Jersey, and, you know, Matt got to know him by recruiting him when he was at St. John's. And, uh, you know, it was very close with their family. So, you know, when CJ made the decision to transfer, uh, we got on him right away, and we feel very fortunate to have him on our team. You've started him a couple of times. Possibility again maybe for him at some point? Yeah, in time? I started him in the second half. Uh, yeah. You know, he's talked about 
uh, being comfortable coming off the bench right now. And, you know, with Casey, the way that he has played lately, 18 points against Kennesaw, hit a couple big ones again for us last night. And, um, you know, I just love the floor spacing that he gives us early in the game. And then you bring a guy off the bench uh, and can play multiple positions. Uh, again, CJ last night played a lot of four for us. And we're going to have to have that with Wilhelm uh, out of the lineup for the rest of the year. Uh, but the good thing about CJ is he can play uh, multiple positions and, and give us good minutes all across the board. KJ is sneaky defensively, isn't he? He, he is. He'll pick some pockets. Yeah, I got, uh, got another one last night. Yeah, yeah he gets, gets up in you. And, you know, again, the thing that people are really running him off the line right now, had a really good take uh, to the basket where he got a layup off the glass. And, um, you know, just a, he's, he's a pest out there. And, you know, again, people just kind of label him as a shooter only. He's, he's a much more complete player than just a shooter. You know, Derek, we talked earlier in the first segment about Derek and the double-double and played so hard inside. I thought Lat did some pretty good things defensively. You needed another big to body up with Key and Liddell last night. Yeah, they, they put you in a very difficult position by starting those two bigs together. And, they're, and they're, especially Liddell is very mobile, and he can guard out on the perimeter. Uh, they went to a switching defense for a while, and I thought we did a good job of hitting some threes uh, over them when they went to that switch, which got them back into a more traditional uh, defense. But, uh, you know, Liddell's such a versatile player, and he can hurt you inside and out. He's really worked on that three-point shot. I think he's averaging about 21 going into last night's game. So, you know, to hold him two for 14, that had a lot to do with Lat. And, you know, fortunate to have somebody with size. And then again, CJ, I thought, really just did everything he could to make it difficult on him, where he fronted him and, you know, forced the catch out at about 15 to 16 feet where he had to back down uh, more. So, you know, again, I, I give our bigs a lot of credit for doing a great job on two of the better bigs in our league. Is Lat frustrated right now shooting the ball he just it hasn't f quite found that stroke yet well I think any shooter that's going through a slump yeah there's always frustration and again I, I can talk about that from experience when you go out and in, in practice and you know you go out every time and nobody's putting in more work than him he's getting in the gym um, you know some two sometimes three times a day to work on it and again I, I when he hit the two against Kennesaw, you know, I thought that's what he needed. And then that would carry over. <clears throat> and I still do. You know, when you see that thing go in the basket, it does a world for your confidence. Hopefully you can go out in the road and find his stroke and then carry that over the rest of the year. Do you still give him the green light or do you are you trying to limit him right now? That's hard to do with a guy that you know has the ability to knock down shots. But they're in a rut right now. Yeah, on good shots, absolutely. And, you know, that's what we're looking for. And, you know, it, I thought I think our shot selection has improved. Yep. Uh, you know, took a couple last night where I pulled guys out, um, you know, on a couple poor shots. But, you know, it didn't have anything to do with Lat. I thought Lat's, all, all of Lat's looks were good shots last night. Nebraska one one says go dig red before you dig. Always call or click A11 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. Uh, Bryce, Bryce last night, I thought when he took the ball to the basket coach, pretty, he's pretty unstoppable when he does that. Yeah, I, I loved his attack. And, you know, we talked to him about that, really trying to get downhill, especially with that right hand. Uh, he had a great little inside-out hesitation move where he finished it on the right baseline, finished with his left hand. Uh, but I, I, I thought Bryce had a great pop last night to his game. We played through him a lot. And, you know, not only as a scorer, but as a playmaker. You know, I wanted the one back where he had Derek kind of rolling behind yeah. uh, that he threw out of bounds. But, you know, I thought it was the right read. We just didn't complete the pass. And, you know, it was good to see him knock down a couple shots. Um, you know, obviously would like to have a couple of those back that, uh, that he missed. But, you know, overall, the pop that Bryce played with uh, in really getting back to league play after struggling in those first two Big Ten games is what we need out of him. And, you know, I'm confident he'll be more efficient uh, in his shot making. But, you know, again, his pop and his attack and getting back to the free throw line uh, was what we needed. How's he doing with the physical nature of this league? And, and last night, even a couple times, guys were giving him some shots, which they're going to do to a freshman to kind of earn his stripes a little bit. How's he doing with that? A lot better. Uh, last night yeah. was definitely a step in the right direction as far as physicality. Um, it, listen, it's it's a huge adjustment for any kid that comes, you know, not only to college but especially to this level in this league with this type of physicality in the size and athleticism uh, of the players, not only the bigs but the guards. And you know, I thought he did get knocked off his spot a little bit early, but last night again he took a huge step in the right direction, and I think it's a confidence builder. Even though he didn't shoot the ball great last night, his attack, getting into the paint. Uh, knocking down a couple shots and getting back to the free throw line was huge, I think, for Bryce to see. 
hard to just tell that a young guy like that in September and October what it's going to be like until they live through it and go, oh, boy, it is. They're chugging me as I'm coming through lanes. They're hitting me every which way. Yeah, in you know this this league that they let you do that, yep. and you know when you when you cut through there, you got to be you expect to be hit. And he'll enjoy, listen. He'll learn to enjoy that. I mean, that's a th that's a great thing about this game. It. I you know back when I first was a freshman and I was playing in the Big Eight back at that in, yeah. in the old days. Um, you know, it got to the point where it was fun, man. He went through there, and not only did they hit you, but he tried to hit him back. And, you know, unfortunately, you can't do that quite as much as we used to be able to do with all the replay and all that crap. But, you know, it was, uh, those, were, those were fun basketball days. Were you playing in the baggy shorts here, or was that just a little bit after you? Well, I was the same year. The Fab Five kind of made that famous. Yeah. And, you know, I was the same class as those guys, as, you know, Weber and Jalen and, um, you know, Jimmy King, Ray, Ray Jackson, and, and Jawan. I mean, uh, th those... Those guys made that famous. So, you know, I played in it, and we were pretty short shorts still at Iowa State. But, yeah, that, that was kind of when that, that whole thing started. Hey, I think people will look back at that era and go, what were they thinking? That doesn't look good. It just wasn't comfortable. That was my how thing. Can it be, yeah, how can it be comfortable? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it was, uh, you know, and then you look back and, you know, the Larry Bird days when, you know, you had the real tight ones on. That didn't look yeah. very comfortable either. So no. I think the happy medium we're at right now is a good thing. Those are like spandex, those <laughs> little tight shorts that Larry Bird used to wear. Coming up in the next segment, we're going to talk to one of your graduate assistants, Hallis Cook, who you've got a pretty good history with, right? And he's one of these young guys that people see on the bench. Probably go, who is that guy sitting back there? Yeah, Hallis uh, started out his career at Oregon State. He was actually the Pac-12 fresh, uh, freshman of the year and played for Craig Robinson out there. Had, had a, you yeah. know, was a really good shooter, averaged double digits, transferred in uh, to play for us at Iowa State. And, you know, just absolutely love the kid. He's, he's all about the right things, great family. Um, and we have another thing in common. He had to uh, leave the game because of a heart condition. And, really? uh, you know, I had to have a pacemaker put in after my open heart surgery. I'm on my second one. I'm about three years away from a third one, according to the numbers and the, the checks on my pacemaker. But Hallis had to have a defibrillator uh, put in with his heart condition. So, you know, you always have a special mm -hmm. bond and a connection with that whole heart community. Uh, but, you know, it's great to have Hallis on board. He's, he's awesome. Guys love him, respect him. He's always uh, willing to get into the gym and do whatever it takes, you know, as far as rebounding for the guys. Um, you know, he's just a, a wonderful, wonderful kid. We're, we're fortunate to have him on our staff. Give me some, what are some duties for a graduate? assistant like that for you well one you can be a mentor to these guys and you know yeah. I, I know with Hallis uh, you know with what he's been through uh, he's very well respected by our players and again you know, it, it, those guys put in as many hours as anybody you know you may have somebody that wants to get in the gym before practice uh, and especially when we go early uh, you know starting at about you know 7 30 or 8 o'clock in the early season you know he's in the gym starting probably at about 6 a.m. and then you might have a guy coming back at 10 p.m. And that's what it's all about. You know, it's, it's coming in there, uh, doing all the little things, and, you know, hopefully getting the opportunity one day uh, to be a full-time coach. But, you know, I think Hallis has a tremendous future in, in this business. And, again, we're fortunate to have him because of his work ethic. Yeah, a lot of times this is the way to kind of cut your teeth. If you want to coach, you got to do these type of things. And good for you to give him an opportunity. So we're looking forward to chatting with him here in a little bit. Long week. I know it's going to be a busy week traveling, no school. At least the guys probably like that. They don't have to worry about a class or a test or something like that coming up. Well, actually, a lot of them are starting their mini session classes uh, oh, tomorrow. Boy. So, yeah, they've got a two-week uh, two week class, and that'll start here on the road uh, this week. It's all online so that we're able to stay on the road uh, you know, this, this week with the games. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's starting back up again. All right, we'll travel safe. Let's go get some wins on the road. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Head coach with us here tonight. When we come back, Hallis Cook, who is a graduate manager for the Cornhuskers, is going to join us. We have time to tell you that our Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance and buy online at woodhouse.com. Hallis Cook to join us next. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. 
Welcome to Ag Answers. Today we're talking about renewable biofuels like corn ethanol and soy biodiesel. Electric vehicles continue to make headlines as we look for ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But did you know by using ethanol, you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 46% compared to traditional gasoline and by up to 86% when you use biodiesel compared to petroleum diesel? Locally produced biofuels are the here and now solution to combating climate change. They are good for our air, good for our wallets, and good for Nebraska. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. During the summer of 2021, three UNL students helped safeguard cattle across the state. Neely Anderson, Tatiana Jones, and Ashton Commons developed secure beef supply plans that prevent the spread of disease outbreak. The plans protect nearly 850,000 cattle across our state and provide greater economic security for this vital industry. What's better than Huskers basketball? A Husker basketball VIP package. Enter for a chance to win four tickets to a game, hospitality access with food, a signed basketball, and the chance to hang courtside during warm-up, all courtesy of Nomi Health, your convenient COVID-19 testing partner. So, get tested and help stop the COVID spread and enter to score a Husker basketball VIP package. Slam dunk, indeed. To enter, visit huskers.com slash Nomi. Huskers.com slash N-O-M-I. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today we're tackling the issue of GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. GMOs may sound scary, but they're actually benefiting our environment and consumers. That's because GMO crops help solve specific problems like insects, food waste, and droughts. By selecting good traits from one plant or organism and adding them to another, farmers are safely using science to produce high-quality foods better than ever before. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he's so cold. The furnace is out again. But wait, he sees an opening. SOS, SOS, he screams and calls 391-2336. SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer. Boy, he made the right call today as SOS is already on the way. SOS is your trustworthy company since 1950. And with Luxair, you get free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. Call 391-2336 or visit SOSHVAC.com today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to listen in on a transmission from Major Laura Stanton, the first person on Mars after a seven-month mission to the planet. Houston, do you read me? Uh, copy that, Major. Anything you need? Yeah, what were last night's Powerball numbers? With the starting jackpot in the millions in drawings Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, everybody wants to know about Powerball from the Nebraska Lottery. What's it look like there, Major? Red. Top prize odds, one in 292 million. What's better than Huskers basketball? A Husker basketball VIP package. Enter for a chance to win four tickets to a game, hospitality access with food, a signed basketball, and the chance to hang courtside during warm-up, all courtesy of Nomi Health, your convenient COVID-19 testing partner. So get tested and help stop the COVID spread and enter to score a Husker basketball VIP package. Slam dunk, indeed. To enter, visit huskers.com slash Nomi, huskers.com slash N-O-M-I. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Hello, I'm Tom Osborne. And I'm Coach Frost. Statistics prove that youth who are mentored and receive support and guidance from a caring adult show measurable improvement in academic achievement, motivation to succeed, and hope. Over the past 30 years, teammates have served more than 43,000 youth. And right now, there are more than 1,000 waiting for a teammate's mentor to visit with them once a week in school. For more information on how you can help the Teammates Mentoring Program, please go to teammates.org. And thank you for supporting our youth. Sponsored by Nebraska Crossing Fast Cash App. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest Premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, 
Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp back with you. It's our men's basketball show for the week. Huskers a couple of games this week, Wednesday night at Michigan State. That game will tip off at 6 o'clock, pregame coverage at 5, and then they're headed to Piscataway to take on the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. That'll be a 1 o'clock game on Saturday afternoon, noon for pregame coverage here on the network. And one guy who is from the state of New Jersey is Hallis Cook, who was named a graduate manager for the Cornhuskers back in June of 2021. He joins us now on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Hallis, great to have you with us, and, and welcome. I'm six months late on this, but welcome to, to Lincoln. Thanks for having me, Greg. Let's talk about your. you grew up in the state of New Jersey, and you played for a legendary coach in Bob Hurley Sr. How, what was that like for you? Oh, it was great, man. It was a, a very uh, great experience. Um, my dad had me around the program since probably the fifth grade, and he had the vision for me. He read the book Miracle of St. Anthony's, and that got, that's kind of how I got aligned with that program. And then um, to play for Coach Hurley, you know, was demanding. It's built so much character in myself as a man that I am today. So it's something that definitely paid off in the long run. And when you were going through it, you didn't know, but <laughs> definitely in the long run it paid, paid off. How else? It's one of the most famous high school programs in the country did you was it a goal of yours to play for him i mean i would guess young basketball players when you're in grade school or middle school junior high you want to play there don't you absolutely man um i was one of the best you know players in union city uh, a city that's neighboring jersey city so um coach Hurley, i heard of him when i was in fifth grade like like i said and then uh you know the rest was all she wrote i was at all his camps every summer in the poconos and then um, I got there as a freshman, played a year of JV, and then I was with him from sophomore to all the way to senior year and only lost about two games. So, you know, I, I learned that DNA, the winning culture, and uh, that was one of the reasons why I'm here in Nebraska. You know, I wanted to help bring that to this program. Visiting with Hallis Cook, who is a graduate manager for the Corn Oscars. All right, Hallis, how does a young guy from Jersey end up in Corvallis, Oregon? How did that happen? Uh, my team, my college teammate uh, and high school teammate, Devon Collier, uh, he, he's from the Bronx, New York. We were really close when he was at St. Anthony's, and then I took a visit out to Corvallis. And, you know, I fell in love with the environment. My family fell in love with Coach Robinson and his staff. And then, um, you know, I got there. Uh, I went through, you know, a tough year, lost six, 16 games as a freshman, you know, and it, I realized, you know, I wanted to get a little bit closer to home and into a winter environment. And then, then came about, you know, Coach Fred Hoiberg and Matt Elgin Massey, and, you know, that got that connection started. But, yeah, Corvallis happened because, you know, also the, the president's brother-in-law, Craig Robinson, the opportunity to play in front of him and, and, and for him and then play in front of his family, you know, was going to a lifetime opportunity. And to go to the White House was a, an experience I couldn't pass up. What was it like then playing for Coach Hoiberg in Ames? Um, I didn't actually get to play for him, but... Uh, I practiced with him every day for a year, and uh, I spent a lot of time with him in the film room. Uh, that's that's kind of how we really got so close. Uh, I used to go in his office and just chop it up with him and watch a lot of sets and watch a lot of you know offensive plays that he would be watching in his office. And I would sit up there for probably like 20 minutes after every after every practice. And at the time, I was going through um, double hip surgery. So I got to spend a lot of time in the huddles as a player, and I was kind of like a coach for my teammates to be able to see the plays from a different perspective and see what's open in it. And that's what's kind of helped, uh, led me to want to do this for a coach to come about here and build that same culture we had at Iowa State and get it going here in Nebraska. Again, we're visiting with Hallis Cook, who's a graduate manager for the Cornhuskers, played collegiately at Oregon State and also Nevada. And, and you, you had some success at Nevada. What, tell me about the, the experience of playing in Reno. Oh, Reno was great. Um, it was it was a, it was an opportunity to do something special. Uh, it was a challenge to go there and bring winning to a team that hadn't won since I think it was like 2008. Javale McGee's team, I think it was, and or Luke Babbitt and them. I forgot which one it was, but um, to go there and play with three other high major transfers, four other high major transfers, and uh, Caleb Martin, Cody Martin, Kendall myself and then Jordan Caroline who was already there um, was a great opportunity and Coach Musselman had a great culture in place and we brought it every day in practice and we were able to you know accomplish great things and we finished all the way into Sweet 16 and one point away from the Elite Eight so 
Hallis, Co Coach mentioned in the last segment that your career got cut short because of a, of a heart ailment. What, what was that about? Oh, uh, yeah. It, it, uh, it was a misdiagnosis, uh, hyper, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, uh, like the hand gather disease, a lot of people call it. Yeah. And um, suddenly, you know, you pass out and have a heart attack on the court. So I had probably like nine episodes where, in my lifetime where I would be in the gym uh, working out in a hot gym, and next thing you know, my heart starts racing, and I get lightheaded, and I just pass out and faint. Um, and that's also what kept myself and Coach Woodbury so close. You know, I went through that whole thing, and he reached out to me uh, and called me and helped me get with the right doctors and gave me the right advice. And because of his advice, you know, I was able to get a loop of cord in place in my chest now that I still have, and um, I was able to go and play. You know, my senior year. I had a spot back on the team from being a student assistant at Nevada and um, playing, starting in the Sweet 16. So, you know, I dealt with a lot of adversity. And, um, you know, Coach Hoiberg has been a special person to me. And I definitely, you know, I owe a lot to him to where I'm to be here today and to be a part of this program, you know, and, and I really want to get this thing going. And I really want to help in every way I can and be a mentor to these guys because, you know, there's times where you go through things in life you don't understand. but you know, there's times in life when you get past it, you're going to understand it. So that's what, a, that's what my role is here, and I just want to be, you know, a great mentor to these guys and help the program in every way I can. Well, that's a perfect segue into my next question. Let's talk more about kind of your day-to-day -day duties with the team, obviously a support system for these guys. You know, because you, you've played it, you know what they're going through. You know what's going through their mind. You know how difficult a season can be. Give me kind of a uh, what's a normal day for you. What 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 would be a day that you would have here in Nebraska right now? Just up early in the gym in, in the office. Uh, you know whether it's in the in the film room with Doc in, in his office or chopping up with Gates' uh, uh, next opponent. Just him telling me information about that. I'll be in the gym. You know, rebounding, passing to the guys, and and then also just you know picking up every little bit of information I can. So if, you know, a guy comes to me, I ask a question, I could give them advice and actually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, and then also uh, just being a mentor for these guys, you know, mentally, Nebraska is a, is a you know, there's not, not a lot of stuff to do besides basketball. So, you know, these guys get really livid every day and sometimes they need to break away from it. So, you know, every time, you know, if I could be having a conversation with a guy in the lounge or playing 2K with the guys, you know, that's stuff I like to do just because, you know, I'm close to their age. And just spend a lot of time with the guys and, and be a mentor and a, and a positive influence, you know. Kind of a cheerleader, maybe? Kind of just pump them up, keep, keep their spirits up? I mean, that game last night, Hallis, was tough. I mean, that was a gut punch. I mean, they had it right there to get the victory. I bet today was kind of tough for the guys. Oh, no, of course. Today's a, today, these days, today are the best days, you know, because it, it shows, you know, what kind of character you have, you know, when you, when you go through a tough game like that. You know, you're going to get to the gym later. You're going to get to the gym early. And, you know, we had a lot of guys in the gym early today. And, you know, that, that shows that we're building that culture here, that, you know, we, that, that will to want to win. And if you see a lot of our performances in the past, it wasn't that team that we saw last night. So, you know, we're taking huge strides to build those championship habits each and every day. No doubt. Are you looking forward to, to going and visiting more Big Ten schools as we get through the season here? Absolutely, man. I look forward to uh, seeing A.J. Hoggett, a couple of Jersey players on this trip. A.J. Yeah. Hoggett, you know, I saw him since he was a little kid uh, in the gym all the time watching me. And uh, then uh, Ron Hopper Jr., I used to work out in the gym with him when I was still playing in my career. Uh, Paul McKay, since he was 10 years old, watched him. I trained his little brother before I got took this job here in Nebraska. So it's a lot of familiar faces. Uh, Coach Pikel's son, I coached him at AU. So, oh wow! It's gonna be a, yeah, it's gonna be a special trip. It's gonna be a special trip for me, you know. Get back home and be back at the. At, uh, I think they call it Rutgers Athletic Center now. I don't, I don't think they call it that. That's what they used to call it. But be back there. I won a couple high school championships there, so it's gonna be an emotional trip. Well, very good. Well, make it real emotional. And get some wins. How about that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> How well, my say birthday. My birthday. My birthday is on, on the fifth to Michigan State. So hopefully, we get a win on my birthday. Let's get <laughs> Hallis a good birthday present. Hallis, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story. It's great to have you part of the Husker family. And let's uh, let's get some wins this week. Yes, sir. Great. We'll do. Very good. Hallis Cook, join us. Great.
Join us, you bet. Hallis Cook, join us here on our Husker Basketball Radio Hour. Hallis Cook, a graduate manager for the Cornhuskers, uh, played collegially at Oregon State, Iowa State, and Nevada. Had a really good career, now part of the Husker staff with Fred Hoiberg. We're back to put a wrap on the show coming up next. Tis the season to get holiday ready with Ford. But time is running out. It's the final days of the Get Holiday Ready sales event at your Ford dealer. Your last chance to get the best deals of the year on Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks. And only a few more days left to get great offers on any one of our amazing, capable Ford SUVs. Inventory is still arriving daily, but time is running out. Hurry. It's the final days to get holiday ready at your Ford dealer. Best-selling claim based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to listen in on a transmission from Major Laura Stanton, the first person on Mars after a seven-month mission to the planet. Houston, do you read me? Uh, copy that, Major. Anything you need? Yeah, what were last night's Powerball numbers? With the starting jackpot in the millions and drawings Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, everybody wants to know about Powerball from the Nebraska Lottery. What's it look like there, Major? Red. Top prize odds, one in 292 million. A shield against the elements. Comfort in the midst of chaos. Shelter in the aftermath of destruction. For 75 years, Shelter Insurance has remained true to our promise to be there when you need us most. This is the heartbeat of our company. Our why. Shelter Insurance. For your auto, home, and life. See Shelter Agent Travis Hawk in Scotts Bluff and ask about Shelter's competitive rates. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Inspired by the legendary coach Tom Osborne, Nebraska Athletics is proud to introduce the 255 collection with the mission to connect style with Nebraska pride. 255 was designed with the fan in mind. With high quality at the forefront, 255 can be worn anywhere from sporting events and business meetings to backyard get-togethers. No matter the occasion, 255 is about feeling confident, looking good, and celebrating the remarkable coaching career of Tom Osborne. Shop now at Huskers.com or participating retailers. For more information, visit Huskers.com slash 255. Our Sports Sunday Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop, finance, and buy out online at woodhouse.com. Again, busy week for Husker basketball. The men will be at Michigan State Wednesday night. It's a 6 o'clock tip, so 5 o'clock pregame coverage here on the network with Ken Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. And then, as Coach mentioned earlier in the hour, they're not coming back to Lincoln. They're going to stay on the road, head right to Piscataway, where they'll take on the Scarlet Knight Saturday at 1 Central, 2 Eastern, with a uh, premium coverage of noon Central time as they play at the Rack, the home of the Scarlet Knights. Next home game will be a week from tomorrow with the Fighting Illini at uh, PBA. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety office one hour sports nightly in the books jessica will join me next hour we're gonna hear from dennis dodd who was down in miami over the holiday weekend to cover michigan and georgia we'll talk some college football run down all the headlines from the busy weekend of sports and take some calls and comments from all of you coming up next hour here on sports nightly Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. This winter season, don't just get ready, drive ready with a new truck or SUV from Woodhouse. 
easily tackle the snow-covered streets and holiday road trips with the whole family with our selection of the top truck and SUV brand lineups. Plus, our team is ready to get you the capability you need, the comfort you want, and the tech to keep the kids entertained. Visit one of our 17 locations and win the season with a new truck or SUV from Woodhouse. Stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following the Huskers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding Nebraska athletics, including game times, results, ticket promotions, prize giveaways, and more. Log on to also follow several sport-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Join today and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Visit huskers.com slash social media to see all of our accounts. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list called JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. You live in a smart home powered by Cox Internet, so you're not thinking about the pizza delivery. You're thinking how nice it is to get everyone together for a fun night. You're not thinking about the pizza. Maybe just a little. Cox Home Life. Show me the front porch camera. Pizza! View your Cox Home Life cameras right from your TV using your Contour voice remote. Visit cox.com slash this is home to learn more. Advertised features require subscription to Cox Internet and Contour TV. A high-speed internet connection is required. Home Life Security Services subject to Home Life Security Service Agreement. Cox Home Life Services provided by Cox Licensed Entities. See cox.com slash licenses.
Happy New Year and welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. Husker fans, I'm Tim Mulhelp, and here's your first ticker of 2022. It's a busy week for Huskers hoops ahead of women's basketball's matchup against eighth-ranked Michigan. Amy Williams met with the media today to discuss what she's learned about her team following their first loss of the season. I've learned that they don't like to lose, and that's a really good thing. Um, that's something that I uh, am very excited to learn about this group is that, you know, it's not, uh, I think they know that there were lots of things that were within our control that, um, that could have cost us that one possession ball game on the road. And so um, uh, I've seen a increased attention to detail in the last couple days of practice. And, um, you know, the, the very next morning uh, before I even got into work, uh, the, there were balls bouncing in the gym and people in the gym. It was a day off for us, but um, they were not satisfied with 21% from the three-point line and, and um, you know, missing a few easy layups. And so I think they've taken some measures, and, and I think those are good things to learn in um, times of adversity. Huskers women's basketball will host Michigan tomorrow right here at PBA at 8 p.m. Pre-game coverage starts on the Huskers radio network at 745. Elsewhere in the Big Ten and hoops tonight. Uh, on the men's side of things, number 23, Wisconsin, is currently leading third-ranked Purdue. So upset alert there at halftime, however, as it's 29-24 Badgers. We'll keep an eye on that one. At 8 p.m., 8-4 Maryland will meet 10-3 Iowa. And no games on the women's side tonight. Initially, there were two, Penn State at Ohio State and Michigan State at Northwestern, but both have been postponed. In the NFL, it appears to be the final home game of his career. Big Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers host the Browns on Monday Night Football. That game gets going in about 10 minutes time at 7.15. That's, that's the ticker. My name is Tim Mulhelt and this is the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Pass off to Tomonaga. Couple of dribbles, three dribbles, four dribbles. The runners up and good by Tomonaga off the left hand. How the heck did he make that one? Chili goes down the lane, kicks to Scoggins, same spot for three, you betcha! Ashley Scoggins on fire, and the Huskers have the lead. Verge down inside to a wide open, and a dunk by Walker. Oh man, did they snooker Ohio State. Hybe solo with Cloud, Cloud bounces her in, it counts, and a foul. Sam Hybe changes the game, kicks the ball off, and gets a foul on Michigan State's best player. To Kobe Webster. Webster reverses to Tomonaga, jab step, back it comes to Webster, shoots a long three, got it! Big, huge goal, huge goal by Webster. Three seconds, two seconds to go in the quarter. Michael Keaton, deep right corner at the buzzer, you! Betcha! Michael Keaton beats the buzzer! Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. And we're back, hour number two, Sports Island here on a Monday night. Going to talk with Dennis Dodd of CBSSports.com. Coming up here in a little bit, he was down in Miami on New Year's Eve to watch the Michigan-Georgia game. We'll get his take on the college football playoff, college bowl season, which is quickly winding down. There's one more bowl game and then the national championship game one week from tonight. So we'll hear from that. We also have our weekend winners coming up later on in the hour. And if you want to be a part of the show, call or text 402-413-2400. And I can... Gladly report that Jessica survived his fir her first winter storm I in Lincoln, did. Nebraska. You All survived. All good. Yep. Uh, you know, shout out to uh, where I live. They shoveled off all the good. sidewalks, and, you know, it was no problem at all. No for car me. sliding or anything? No. All good. So, uh, yeah, I uh, managed, you know. Thank it was goodness. it was pretty cold. I'm not gonna lie. It was cold. And when I would just let my dog out, I would just open up the door with a leash and make him go. I wasn't going outside. Yeah, that's, that's, a good, <laughs> that's a veteran move right there to do that. Uh, you know, and thank goodness we didn't get as much snow as they thought. They thought four to six inches. I think we had about close to two, so it wasn't nearly the kind of snow we thought we would get. So good for you. Well, um, we had the head coach on last hour, and, and Jessica. I know it was a loss last night. It was disappointing, but I thought there was improvement. I thought that team showed. They showed out better than they did maybe in some of the games in early December. No doubt about it. I mean, Ohio State's a good basketball team. We didn't know how they were going to look. Um, 
you know, being that they had kind of the weirdness with all the COVID and not being able to play and who might be able to play, but uh, they just shot the lights out of it. I mean, that's it. Jokingly, I asked uh, Fred Hoiberg before one of the shows is, is PBA a shooter's gym? And he said it is apparently for all the teams we play because it does. It seems like, guys, it, it's a great gym and it, it's got to be depth perception wise. I mean, because guys come in and just light it up there. But, um, you know, got to guard the three better. But they had just a heck of a night shooting the basketball. But, um, yeah, I thought that was just a much better performance uh, all around. You could tell they were fighting. Uh, they wanted to be out there, and, and hopefully that kind of carries over as we move forward. That kind of effort, to me, will win them games. If they bring that night yep. after night, they'll win games. I don't know how many, but they will win some games. The, you know, Now, the challenge is do that night in and night out, and that team has not been very consistent, but hopefully they've kind of found a formula, found a rhythm that they can do that. And I'm anxious to watch them play Wednesday when they play Michigan State. But even though I was saddened that they didn't win at the end of the game, I felt a little bit encouraged just because I liked what I saw. And I think, I think the fans that were at PBA kind of mirrored that. They were, they were, I think, into the game, and they appreciated what they saw the Huskers do execution-wise. They look much better last night. I mean, as you mentioned, I mean, there's improvement there. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, would love to have the win, had a chance to win at the end, but there's no doubt watching that team, that's a much better team than what we saw a couple times out, um, you know, during the, the five-game skit or whatever. You know, North Carolina State, they played well, and then Indiana, but the, the games after that, I mean, much, much better effort, um, execution. I thought they fought better on the defensive end, uh, passed the ball better, shot the ball better. Uh, you know, just all around, I thought there were much improvements uh, that we saw out of the team last night than we saw maybe a, a couple games prior to that, that win before the, the break. Huskers back at it again two times this week on the road at Michigan State, Wednesday at Rutgers on Saturday for that game. Crypto asked it, and I kind of threw it out at Coach last hour. He's like, where was Alonzo Verge? Like, he did not play the last nine minutes of regulation, did not play in the overtime. I don't totally know what to make of that. I think that there, he, as Coach said, hey, Kobe Webster was in a good rhythm. We felt like we had a good flow with Kobe. I think we'll see. Let's see what happens in the Michigan State game. Does Kobe grab a bigger role on this team than Alonzo? I don't know. But I think the coach is right. I think there was a little bit more of a rhythm and a flow when Kobe was running the point. Well, and as coach has said, and he said here on this show, that he's got to be better about when the shot selection is not good, you know, kind of putting guys on the bench and, and you know, letting them know that, hey, if you're going to take those shots, you're going to come sit on the bench because that's not okay. We got we to gotta be better about the shot selection. And so maybe that was part of it. Um, but, yeah, at, we saw Kobe came out. He hit, he hit a couple big shots and just made a couple great passes. And, you know, he's been in these games and he's battled in these games before. And so uh, probably just felt like he was the guy to kind of help them down the stretch win that game. Lonzo just won a six from the floor. He was not, he was not, the ball was not going in for him. And Kobe splashed a couple of threes. And so we'll see what the rotation looks like in just a couple of days when they go to, to East Lansing to take on Michigan State. Let's talk some college football. The, the national semifinals have come and gone again. And it's really become a theme in the playoff era of college football that the semifinals have not been good games. And I was hopeful, particularly with the Georgia-Michigan game, that it would be. But it was not. It was a one-sided Georgia slaughter on Friday. I kind of had a feeling that, I mean, again, Michigan had not been on that stage before, but Georgia had. And they, they all year long have dominated. Got to think that they were pretty not okay with how they came out in the SEC championship game, kind of had something to prove. And unfortunately, Michigan was the uh, team that they, they had to prove it against. But um, I thought you were going to talk about when you said, let's talk about college football, how I went 17-1 and one in my bowl picks. Is that right? Yes. That was your overall record? I didn't. Holy I cow. got them all right that wow. last, uh, that second round. I was feeling really good at halftime of the Rose Bowl because I took Utah. Yeah. And I felt really good with about four minutes to go in the Citrus Bowl, because I was the only one that took Iowa. And I, I mean, both. It, a lot of game, a lot of, a lot of great games where teams came back to win. Look at Oklahoma State coming back to win. Um, as um, you know, not good of games as the um, the college football semifinals were. There were some other really good bowl games to watch th over the weekend. I, I thought so too, and people kind of wondered what would the bowls if we expand the playoffs, what will happen to the bowls? I think the bowls will live because I think people love. A lot of, of bowl game action over the holidays. It's a distraction from 
maybe breaking bread with all your family members day after day after day, and they draw well. I saw last week ESPN put out that a, hand, a lot of their bowl games drew over a million viewers. That's going to sell advertising dollars, so that's what it's about. I was highly entertained. I was disappointed with the two semifinals. I felt like Bama probably was going to handle Cincinnati. They did. I just thought Michigan would show up better against Georgia. How about Georgia's favored over Bama? Really? Even though Bama beat them by 17 three weeks ago, Georgia's the favorite on next Monday night. I wonder why. I wonder, like, how that... I wonder why people are thinking that they'll come back and win. It's just so weird to see that matchup for the third time in a season. And, you know, I saw a lot of arguments about that, about, you know, the... Um, not as good semifinal game yet again, and just but teams earn their right to be there. That's what's kind of a crazy about it is that it's not like those teams weren't deserving of being in those spots. It's just again, once again, Georgia and Alabama just that much uh, far ahead everybody else. Buckle up, put the phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. No news to report to you all today on the Husker football coaching front. No announcements from Scott Frost. A lot of the coaches were back in the building today after a week off last week as everything was really shut down, but they're kind of back in office. Saw a handful of the coaches walking around today. And I know some people are getting antsy because there's no announcement on a quarterback, but I think everybody just needs to show a little patience here. I think there's still a lot of names out there. I think the Nebraska is associated with, with a handful of names. I'm not panicking. I think there are folks, Jessica, that are. They want to know who that, who that heir apparent to Adrian Martinez is. I guess I just want to tell everybody, be patient. It's going to come. Well, and again, with all the everything that kind of was going on, holidays, finals, all of that, you know, some of these guys might want to, you know, take a visit here. And with coaches being out and, and, you know, getting those guys in. And it might take a couple more weeks for them to be able to come here and actually, you know, get here for an official visit and make sure, you know, that this is the spot for them. It's more than just kind of having those conversations. A lot of those guys want to come here and see it and feel it and know that, that this is the spot for them. And so, and as we've seen with the Caleb Williams announcement today, I mean, those dominoes, you said it. You said we're going to see more of those announcements coming up after bowl games. And sure yep. enough, we have. And I don't even think it's done. I mean, we're probably going to see it throughout the spring, depending on if guys win or lose jobs, if they don't like their new coaching situations. It's just we're just kind of, I think, scratching the surface of what this transfer portal is going to look like going into next season. And folks, remember, Samori Toure did not become a Husker until like late May or early June. And look how well that worked out for that. You mentioned Caleb Williams, the Oklahoma quarterback who – Surplanted Spencer Rattler midway through that season for Oklahoma. He did enter the portal. He is keeping the door open to return to Oklahoma, but really in an unprecedented move in a lot of ways. Oklahoma, their athletic director Joe Castiglione and their new head football coach Brent Venables put out a statement today talking about Caleb and just they were backing their new offensive coordinator, Jeff Levy, who's coming from Ole Miss to, to run the offense for the Sooners. It was almost like it was almost like a sales job to Caleb, but to other people as well. What'd you make of this statement? This is really unprecedented to see something like this. Yeah, and I saw a lot of people. Obviously, I still have a lot of uh, people that I follow and that show up in my timeline about it. And, you know, the big message after Lincoln Riley left was that Oklahoma is bigger than one player, bigger than one name. And so, you know, you've got guys going in and out of the portal. And then the fact that is it, it's kind of contradictory a little bit that you're coming out and making this big statement on Caleb Williams after you just kind of made such a big deal about that Oklahoma is bigger than any one person, any one player, any one coach. So, yeah, pretty unprecedented. And, um, you know, I, I think they'll it's kind of the same situation there after they lost Spencer Rattler. I mean, they're going to have to get a quarterback and have to move on that quickly, uh, especially implementing a new offense and, and all of that. But it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. You know, I, again, I was at Oklahoma when Caleb Williams was going through his recruiting process, and Oklahoma had a different guy committed. It was the number one uh, quarterback in whatever class that was. I think it was the 2019, 2020 class. And um, they didn't have a spot for Caleb. And Caleb came in and said he was going to walk on. That, that That's how he wanted to play for Lincoln Riley and so kind of not really surprised that Caleb decided to uh, enter the transfer portal after Lincoln Riley left because I kind of felt like and I think a lot of people felt like all along that Lincoln or that Caleb was a Lincoln Riley guy so we'll see if he ends up at USC or, or what that kind of looks like but um, 
Yeah, it's uh, crazy times. But as he mentioned, and you know that legally he has to put his name in the portal to be able to see what the options are out there to, to talk to guys, can't to talk to other places. Right. I can't blame him for doing that, but it's a, it's a fair point. I mean, the statement, and folks, go go find it. You can find it out on social media or on some of the sports websites. It's easy to find. It's just really unprecedented to see an athletic director and a head football coach kind of put out a statement about a young guy entering the portal. Now, uh, Craig Bull, our old friend out at, at Wyoming, he had a quarterback join the portal, and they put out kind of a help wanted sign that, that, that Wyoming put out a couple of weeks ago. But this is this one was really unique from the, the powers to be at Oklahoma. But it's just we're just in such crazy times. I can't even imagine some of this stuff happening a few years ago, let alone maybe a few months ago. And here it is, it's happening now. But Husker fans, I know you're getting impatient. You want to see what quarterbacks are coming through the door. It's going to happen. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. Yeah, and it kind of makes you wonder, like, is is this how it's going to be from here on out? Is it going to yeah. settle down a little bit? I don't um, think so. You know, I mean, maybe you get if maybe it comes to the time where you get some, um, you know, a group of quarterbacks that stick around. But I, I feel like again, as we've we've talked so much about, as long as this coaching carousel happens so often, I feel like the the player carousel is going to happen as well. But yeah, as far as the transfer portal goes, and some of these older guys that quarterbacks, you know, be patient. It's coming. It's just a matter of you know, maybe they want to. Do their due diligence and, and come to campus and see what all the facilities look like and what, you know, the academic center, all that. You know, a lot of these guys, I've done a lot of interviews and I've never been at a place where and talked to so many players where all that matters here, you know, the academics and, and the how they're going to set them up for the future outside of football. That's important to a lot of the guys that come here. You, you and Jeremiah were button heads a few weeks ago, and this kind of proves your point that so many players pick a school because of the coach not because of the school and I'm not saying all oh, I'm and don't be don't I'm not blanking in this but a lot of players pick because of the coach they want to play for not because of the academics or because of the proximity or those they pick a coach that they want to attach themselves to and I think we we butted heads because Jeremiah is still even though he's not that old but he's kind of that older school where he he committed to Nebraska and he was going to stay committed here and this is what he committed to but you know I've done enough interviews over the last 10 years with recruits to see how how it's changed and how the narrative has changed and how the feeling has felt in the last you know two three four cycles of these recruits it, it, that that narrative has changed it's less about the place and what you know uh, amenities are at the places it's about the relationships that they've built with these coaches and so you know that and again like you said it's not every it's not every player but a lot of these athletes it, that's kind of where it's we've gone now and so i think that's where why we butted heads is because i i talk to these recruits every single year and i hear what they're saying and jeremiah is more of the guy that you know back when he committed that's kind of how it was but it, even just in the last five years it's just changed tremendously that's what the changes to the portal to the one-time transfer, to NIL. It's all changed the dynamics of this sport, and it's going to be fascinating to follow as we make our way through the coming years. Hey, help stop the spread of COVID and score a Husker basketball VIP package. Win a Huskers basketball VIP experience, including tickets, a signed basketball, and exclusive game day access, courtesy of Nomi Health, your convenient COVID-19 testing partner. Visit huskers.com slash Nomi. N O M I know me. We're back with Dennis Dodd of CBSSports.com. We'll talk about the college football playoffs and the national championship game, which is a week out between Bama and Georgia. That's coming up next. This winter season, don't just get ready, drive ready with a new truck or SUV from Woodhouse. Easily tackle the snow covered streets and holiday road trips with the whole family with our selection of the top truck and SUV brand lineups. Plus, our team is ready to get you the capability you need, the comfort you want, and the tech to keep the kids entertained. Visit one of our 17 locations and win the season with a new truck or SUV from Woodhouse. What's better than Huskers basketball? A Husker basketball VIP package. Enter for a chance to win four tickets to a game, hospitality access with food, a signed basketball, and the chance to hang courtside during warm-up, all courtesy of Nomi Health, your convenient COVID-19 testing partner. So, get tested and help stop the COVID spread and enter to score a Husker basketball VIP package. Slam dunk, indeed. To enter, visit huskers.com slash Nomi, huskers.com slash N-O-M-I. 
From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. The university has a new undergraduate business and law major. Students majoring in business and law are learning to use legal knowledge to better solve business challenges. They are also gaining skills in regulatory compliance, financial services, securities regulation, and corporate social responsibility. Upon graduation, they will boost the state's talent pool in these critical areas of expertise. Tis the season to get holiday ready with Ford. But time is running out. It's the final days of the Get Holiday Ready sales event at your Ford dealer. Your last chance to get the best deals of the year on Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks. And only a few more days left to get great offers on any one of our amazing, capable Ford SUVs. Inventory is still arriving daily, but time is running out. Hurry, it's the final days to get holiday ready at your Ford dealer. Best-selling claim based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in-venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. Did you ever buy something and get more, more than you expected? Emeritus offers insurance, employee benefits, and financial services, but we deliver so much more. The comfort of a human voice when you need it, the confidence of flashing a beautiful smile, the relief that your family can keep living the life they love, the serenity of knowing you've planned well and can enjoy life. That's what we really deliver. We call it fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services, and much more. This isn't the start. Before I got here, I started training. And before that, I did something to my back. But my first move was Athletico Physical Therapy. That's where I'd eventually end up. So why not start there? I mean, my therapist immediately found the source of my pain. These are the same physical therapists who work with elite marathon runners. So soon, I was back to running, but without pain. <sighs> you got this. It all starts at Athletico. Schedule your free assessment at athletico.com. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment. And you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Did you know that cigarette butts make up a large portion of microplastics in the ocean? Which end up in 70% of seabirds and 30% of sea turtles. Bank of the West is helping to solve this problem by not financing big tobacco. Proving that what a bank chooses not to finance can be just as important as what it does. Learn more about what we do and don't finance at bankofthewest.com slash change. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Cornerstone Bank proudly serves Nebraska with a full line of loan and deposit products. Cornerstone is large enough to handle all of your financial needs while offering the personal service you deserve and the local decision-making you expect from a family-owned community bank. Stop in or call one of the Cornerstone Bank locations near you to discover the Cornerstone difference. Bank on a solid foundation. Cornerstone Bank. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Loan subject to approval. Insider Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer. They have 27 locations across Nebraska and down into Kansas Acres. Solutions for every field. And delighted to be joined now by Dennis Dodd of CBSSports.com. Dennis, Happy New Year to you. Hope you had a, a good a good yeah. night swinging the New Year in. Yeah, well, I was uh, I was hacking on deadline on New Year's Eve, so it wasn't not not unlike previous years. So, but Happy New Year to you. Well, and I know your deadline was because you were at the Orange Bowl covering that Michigan-Georgia game. Dennis, were you surprised by how easy that, that seemed to be for the dogs? I was because I picked Michigan outright. I thought the matchup was good. I thought they'd be able to run the ball. Cade McNamara was more than a game manager, and I thought those two twin 
forces on the outside of the line that Nebraska is familiar with, Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo, would, would be difference makers, and they were completely stoned that night. So I, I was surprised. The other, the other game, probably not, right? Probably felt Bama had the, the no. big edge. No, I think once Alabama figured out that they could run the ball uh, against Cincinnati and there wasn't much they could do about it, that game was over. Um, and they were to the point that, that Kirby – Kirby Smart in his post game Friday night said, "Well, Alabama's got a five or six hour head start on us. I mean, that's how well these teams know each other, and that how that's how competitive that game is." Well, and Nick Saban came back the next day and said that they're the underdog. Are you buying that? Well, give me an early a snapshot, and we have a week to go. But what is your early take on that matchup? Well, I mean, uh, Georgia was a six point favorite in the SEC championship game, and it will be 37 days between games. Now they're a two-and-a-half-point favorite. But within that, Georgia's had to prove it has flushed the memory and the failings of that game, of the SEC championship game. And I think mentally that was the biggest thing for them. Uh, Stetson Bennett played well. The defense got back to normal. They pretty much did anything they wanted to do against the Michigan team, as I said, I thought matched up well with them. But, yeah, I th- look, sooner or later, Georgia has to win this. Kirby's 0-4 against Nick. Georgia's lost seven in a row at the record for in this series. It goes back to 1895. In fact, Georgia hasn't won since Nick's first year in 2007. So it, it, it's hard. I did a story during the season. It's really hard to portray the longing and the angst and the suffering of Georgia fans for 41 years now. <laughs> between championships and if they lose this you know they're they're a good program but there's no guarantee you're going to be back in that summit anytime soon so all that's on the table for georgia dennis i think those of us who love college football might be a little discouraged today because it does seem like there's a big gap between those two in the rest of the country is that fair or is that just a snapshot where we are right now well, last yeah, last year it was there's a big gap between those two and ohio state and clemson well, now it's kind of coagulated at the top with those two. They get the best players. They have the best coaches. They're in the best conference. And it just keeps, you know, just keeps going like that. As Bob Bowlesby told me early on during, during um, the expansion talk, when that broke last year, it said, look, it's going to be a great opportunity for schools. But there's no, there's no certainty that the same teams won't be in it every year. And I think he's right. It'll be like the college basketball tournament where we all thrive in the Cinderella's and the upsets, but Duke's always in the final four. Gonzaga, which is now a major established program, is always in the final four. You know who those teams are going to be going in. Uh, Kansas is competing for it. And so you're going to see more of the same, same if and when they expand to 12. Busy with Dennis Dodd of CBSSports.com here on Sports Nightly on the Husker Sports Network. You mentioned Bob Bullsby. Dennis, the commissioner of the Big 12 Conference, how about his champion? What, what a year Baylor has had. Is that, that's really a remarkable story in Waco, isn't it? It, it really is. Where the, I, I don't think they've announced it yet. Dave Aranda was supposed to get extended, and he will, but it's got to be a monster extension now um, because of what he's accomplished. Baylor was the only school, the first school since 2006, to win a national championship in basketball and then go to a New Year's Six Bowl. Florida did that in 06. That has to tell you something about Baylor athletics now. But, you know, they, they are Big 12 champions. Um, Oklahoma State was within a, a completely botched red zone inside the five series from going to the playoff. I mean, they, you know, look what they did. against. They beat Notre Dame for one of the biggest wins in school history. That's not the story. The story is, I just screwed up inside the three against Baylor. You had him beat. Um, and then you see Mike Gundy saying, we need more money in the program. Well, yeah, I guess, you know, for, you know, when they lose their, their defensive coordinator, Jim Knowles, but let's put the blame where the blame is. They're that close. And what you and I are old enough to remember, you know, they, they stepped on their you-know-what against Iowa State in 2011 or else they'd be in the playoffs. That was the closest BCS margin ever between them and, Alabama that year so boy just it has to be just people in Stillwater have to just be uh, hitting themselves they were that close to being in the playoff Dennis I know there's there's the Texas Bowl still to come but but that'll do it well, give me some impressions mm-hmm. you had of all the Bulls that we've we've witnessed over the last 10 to 10 days to two weeks 
Uh, well, those that were played <laughs> yeah. were pretty good. I mean, I think that's part of the evaluation. They just kind of went into this with, you know, you know, who was going to play, who wanted to play. We still don't know the full story about some of these games that were canceled. It looked like Texas A&M didn't want to be there. It was like, yeah, now we'll take a pass on this one. Uh, UCLA may be the same way, where it happened the day of the game in the Holiday Bowl. But I was really I, – I thought the Rose Bowl was highly entertaining. It set the stage next week. To me, the top two Heisman front runners are Jackson Smith, Ajigba, and C.J. Stroud in one, two in either order because they they were really good this year to the point that Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave opted out, and they both said this kid, uh, Jackson Smith, Ajigba, was the man. Uh, you know, watch out for him. And now we saw it, 347 – uh, reception yards in that game. And then uh, C.J. Stroud went completely nuts with six touchdown passes. They're going to be good. They have to get the defense fixed um, to keep from stumbling in the Big Ten and not getting to that playoff opportunity because I thought that was the issue this year. Michigan worked them in that game, uh, really got physically beat them down to the, the one by 15 points. They're going to have to get really better on defense to be what they were. Yes, I'd like to work in a quick little Husker question for you. Mark Whipple hired yeah. by Scott Frost as the new OC coming from Pitt where he did a really good job of the Panthers and, and got Pickett to at least the Heisman ceremony. What's the book on Mark Whipple? Uh, probably right where he should be as a coordinator. Obviously didn't do well as a head coach at, at UMass. Get tremendous credit for developing Kenny Pickett and Addison, the receiver who I think won the Bolitnikoff. I, I, I think, check me on that, but I, I think he won the Bolitnikoff as well for the best receiver. Um, and so, so schematically, I think Nebraska came up with a good one. Um, you know, he tried his hand at being his head coach. There are just some guys that, you know, maybe hit their head on that glass ceiling, and this is who they are. That's who Mark Whipple is. Uh, very, very well respected in the industry, so I think Nebraska got a good one. All right, very good. Dennis, you're going to be at the, the game on Monday? I am leaving Friday um, with with uh, three CFP meetings that weekend. We'll see if this thing goes through this year. Very good. Well, I know you're – Dennis, last thing, I know you're down there in the Kansas City area. If you bump into our old friend Blair Kirkhoff, please pass along our best wishes for him. I know he's in a big fight with leukemia right now. I was really stunned by that story. And So if you, if you bump into Blair, please pass along our best. I, I will, and, uh, and I have. I've spoken to him a little bit on it, and he's uh, – he knows all our thoughts are with him. He's going to be fine. Very good. Dennis, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Greg. There he is, Dennis Dodd, CBSSports.com, our guest here on Sports Island. He joined us on our Sports Island hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance, buy online at Woodhouse. Dot com. All right, phone lines are open, 402-413-2400. Jessica will rejoin me next. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to listen in on a transmission from Major Laura Stanton, the first person on Mars after a seven-month mission to the planet. Houston, do you read me? Uh, copy that, Major. Anything you need? Yeah, what were last night's Powerball numbers? With the starting jackpot in the millions in drawings Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, everybody wants to know about Powerball from the Nebraska Lottery. What's it look like there, Major? Red. Top prize odds, one in 292 million. At Subaru, they love building vehicles for those who pack a lot into life. The redesigned 2021 Crosstrek is their way of saying more power to you. An upgrade in horsepower means you have a world of fun and adventure waiting for you. And the Crosstrek comes with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. Love, it's what makes Subaru, Subaru. Visit Deteau Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or at DeteauSubaru.com. Upgraded horsepower available on select models. 
Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You live in a smart home powered by Cox Internet, so you're not thinking about the pizza delivery. You're thinking how nice it is to get everyone together for a fun night. You're not thinking about the pizza. Maybe just a little. Cox Home Life. Show me the front porch camera. Pizza! View your Cox Home Life cameras right from your TV using your Contour voice remote. Visit cox.com slash thisishome to learn more. Advertised features require subscription to Cox Internet and Contour TV. A high-speed Internet connection is required. Home Life Security Services subject to Home Life Security Service Agreement. Cox Home Life Services provided by Cox Licensed Entities. See Cox.com slash licenses. Looking for a great Christmas gift idea? Look no further than expanding your loved one's Husker closet with an item from the new 255 collection, inspired by legendary coach Tom Osborne. With high quality at the forefront, 255 can be worn anywhere, from sporting events and business meetings to backyard get-togethers. No matter the occasion, 255 is about feeling confident looking good, and celebrating the remarkable coaching career of Tom Osborne. Shop now at Huskers.com or participating retailers. For more information, visit Huskers.com slash 255. This winter season, don't just get ready, drive ready with a new truck or SUV from Woodhouse. Easily tackle the snow-covered streets and holiday road trips with the whole family with our selection of the top truck and SUV brand lineups. Plus, our team is ready to get you the capability you need, the comfort you want, and the tech to keep the kids entertained. Visit one of our 17 locations and win the season with a new truck or SUV from Woodhouse. What's better than Huskers basketball? A Husker basketball VIP package. Enter for a chance to win four tickets to a game, hospitality access with food, a signed basketball, and the chance to hang courtside during warm-up, all courtesy of Nomi Health, your convenient COVID-19 testing partner. So, get tested and help stop the COVID spread and enter to score a Husker basketball VIP package. Slam dunk, indeed. To enter, visit huskers.com slash Nomi, huskers.com slash N-O-M-I. Everyone knows that Dakota Mac is known for their great rates on long-term fixed ag real estate loans. But just how long-term are they? Well, even longer term than your first ride on the Gravitron at the county fair. And even longer term than the line to buy the corn dog you definitely shouldn't have eaten before you got on the Gravitron. Oof, so long-term. Hi, it's Nick Luxinger from Dakota Mac. Give me a call at 402-740-6445 to learn all about our competitive rates on 30-year fixed rate loans. Momentum. It's building at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with game-changing work in precision agriculture, nanoscience, and digital humanities. We're unlocking mysteries in brain research, solving the impossible with remote surgery using robots, and we're creating bold futures with world-leading research in early childhood education. We don't slow down, and we're not letting up. We are Nebraska. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, the solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you until the top of the hour, 402-413-2400. The number to dial us up with a comment or question. Yes, Jessica has officially won our picks segment. You went 17-1 no. and in Where's bowl Where's my games. trophy? I know. Like, my Andrew, crown? Andrew, I think, has got it somewhere. I mean, I was expecting, like, a full-on <laughs> celebration. Maybe that was why we had to push back the show, because you guys were planning a big celebration for me today. And Art in Los Angeles wants to know, please ask her what her secret is. Well, man, I started off good, and then uh, I let you guys get back into it uh, later, but... Um, no, I don't know. I just, um, I don't, I didn't pick the spreads. I didn't get that right, all of them. I just picked, we, we picked straight up. So straight up, yeah. 17 and 1. So I, I don't know how much I did, how well I did if you were talking about gambling on that uh, in Vegas. But I, I don't know. I just uh, went with my gut. You went 10 and 0 this past week. You may, and that was Michigan State's game, Wisconsin's 
the Rutgers, Wake Forest, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Utah, Penn State, Arkansas, Kentucky. Iowa, Kentucky, Bama, Cincinnati, Oklahoma State, Notre Dame, Bader, Ole Miss. You went 10 and 0. I went 8 and 2, and I fell behind. I went backwards. <laughs> <laughs> My two that I went on a limb where I had Utah winning the Rose Bowl and Iowa winning the Citrus. They almost did. I mean, both games. Both of them. Uh, those are both great games. But, uh, yeah, I, don't, I just um, I kind of felt like C.J. Stroud would go off, and sure enough, he did. He sure did. Probably a Heisman favorite, right? For yeah. For next year, he's got to be. Well, especially now with Caleb Williams not knowing where. I mean, he'll probably be no matter what. But, um, you know, with uh, what? Who was the other? There was another quarterback. Well, Bryce Young is well, back. Well, yeah, Bryce Young, Bama, and then there's like there's like four that will probably be in the top in the Heisman favorites. But. That Rose Bowl was wild. That thing was really fun. You know, and, and you know, people there are, there are some people that think there are too many bowl games. I, I don't know. I enjoy it. I think college football fans enjoy it, and I, I understand that most of the attention goes on the on the semifinals. And I do think I do think college football makes a mistake putting the semifinals on New Year's Eve. I think it's a bad time frame. I think a lot of people are busy. They're going to events. They're going to parties. I think it gets lost on New Year's Eve. So I'm trying to think because they've moved it a couple of different times. Yeah. Um, was it at the um, second year? Gosh, what I was with Oklahoma and it was on New Year's Day and that was right. bad. Like the the ratings were really bad, and so then they moved it back. And you know, but yeah, I, I you'd think that maybe they and maybe. It, because it would push it back a little bit more, but maybe January 2nd would be ideal. Uh, yeah, I just think, uh, you know, why, why not maybe be tonight? Like about a Monday night. Uh, I mean, I know the NFL's got their deal, but uh, I don't know. I think college football needs to be creative in where you put it. Put it on a night where there's not a lot of other things going on, and you can capture the whole thing. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, I especially because... I don't. I haven't seen the ratings for Saturday's games, but I, I think either. they were. Pre you would think that they would be pretty good, uh, especially with how close they were. But if you know the fact that there was nothing else to compete with those two games, you know the semifinal games. If you did that on a um, the Saturday before, uh, which I don't know. Again, maybe that will change depending on where New Year's Eve falls. But yeah, you got to think. I do. I do remember that first year they had it on New Year's Eve. The ratings were really bad, and so they decided to move it away from that. And then for some reason they moved it back. And I don't right. know why they why they did that. I, I don't either. I, I think people much smarter than me need to can figure this stuff out. But. Um, yeah, odd deal. Speaking of odd, how about Antonio Brown yesterday? You got an explanation for that? That was Man, weird. Yeah. Weird and strange. Super weird and, and just kind of sad. And, I mean, what's you, makes you wonder what's kind of going on with him. And you don't want to, you know, uh, speculate on, on what's going on. But nobody in their right mind you would think would do something like that to a team. And, and especially they... You know, the Bucks have really gone, and Tom Brady has really gone out on a limb for him to give him a second chance. I mean, he wasn't getting many of those. And so, um, you know, to give him kind of a second and third chance. And I don't know. I mean, I, I saw somewhere where it was he was like one catch away from like uh, 300 and something, $100,000. $300,000 bonuses, a couple for yardage and number of receptions. He was close to both. Like, so why would you, was he mad that he didn't get it in that game? Because you got to, if you play in another game, you're going to get a chance to get it again, you'd think. I, I don't know. I mean, was it just in the regular season? But, I, yeah, just the, what he kind of walked away from and um, kind of just makes you wonder. And, and you saw the players kind of going over there, kind of talking to him, uh, Mike Evans and Tom Brady, and just kind of, pleading for him to, to stick around and so hopefully you know he gets help and, and gets figured out uh, because it just kind of makes you wonder it just you've never seen something like that so it makes you wonder kind of what's going on yeah I think there's a lot more than what we know about in that thing and it is it's sad you just felt like somebody kind of lost where they were or who they were at that point in time well you'll be happy to know that the Browns are holding their own against the Steelers. No score late in the first quarter. I think you upset both Tim and Andrew, who are yeah, I did that on purpose. diehard Pittsburgh Cedar fans. Well, obviously, I, I, I like Baker Mayfield, but um, I did that on purpose because we have the two Steelers fans. I'm trying to cause a little drama up in here. Andrew, I think, had his terrible towel with him today, waving it around. I mean, he left because he got so mad at me. So He, he, said he, he threatened to egg my car. <laughs> he did say that, didn't he? Because Off I said, air. go Brownies. 
Well, if that happens, you'll know where to start. Great. If it happens, you, Andrew, a guilty, guilty party there. All right, 402-413-2400. A lot of love for Jessica. Rudy says, uh, beginner's luck. No, women are just smarter than men. Way to go in your pick segment. I won my pick segment a year ago, too. So I've won. I know it wasn't here, but I've won it back-to-back -back years. I've done it two times, so. And we probably won't hear from Jeremiah for a while. He'll no, go, he'll he's, go into hiding. He's probably mad now that he he uh, failed to uh, rally uh, late. In fact, he went backwards as we got into bowl season. He he did not pick up steam there at all. All right, we're back to we finish off the show, including our weekend winners. All that's coming up next. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to listen in on a transmission from Major Laura Stanton, the first person on Mars after a seven-month mission to the planet. Houston, do you read me? Uh, copy that, Major. Anything you need? Yeah, what were last night's Powerball numbers? With the starting jackpot in the millions in drawings Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, everybody wants to know about Powerball from the Nebraska Lottery. What's it look like there, Major? Red. Top prize odds, one in 292 million. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. There is no place like Nebraska, and there's no place that treats you like home, like Sap Brothers. For 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and been a reliable partner to local farms and Husker fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into their travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. At Great Western Bank, they understand what commitment to community means. It's more than setting up shop. For Great Western Bank, commitment means growing together and serving their communities. With more than 50 locations in Nebraska, they are dedicated to making life great. Thank you, Lincoln, for allowing them to be a part of this great community. Great Western Bank, member FDIC. Our Sports Only Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop, finance, and buy online at woodhouse.com. A couple of Big Ten men's basketball games tonight. Wisconsin upsetting Purdue 57-54. There's still over six minutes left in that game. That'd be a big upset of the Badgers going to Mackey Arena in West Lafayette and beat them. And coming up, top of the hour, Iowa and Maryland. Husker women in action tomorrow night. Big game against top ten Michigan at PBA. Eight o'clock tip time for that game. See if the women can get back on the winning track tomorrow. I, I think they will. I mean, it's going to be a tough game, but the first Big Ten game at home, I think they learned a lot from that game at Michigan State. It'll be a tough one, no doubt, but I think uh, they'll be they'll come out ready to play and, and fired up. Uh, you know, we heard Amy Williams talking about it earlier. I got a chance to take, talk to Sam Hybe today. It's been a uh, great couple of days. They've really taken a lot away since that loss at Michigan State. 
All right, let's uh, jump into some weekend winners. What stand out to you? I'm going to give it up to my dad, Jack Cootie. He got an albatross this weekend. Hey, all right. Yeah, on a par five, uh, fift on 15, it's a par five at Elk City Golf Course in Oklahoma. And so I asked him, I said, well, did you smoke a drive and chip in? And he said, no, he hit a horrible drive. He was 225 to the pin and hit his three wood in. Wow. So he's had, I think. Could, did, could he see it? I, I, did, I didn't ask. Wonder if he could see it go in or not. I think they just pulled up and he saw that it went in. But yeah, he he's had I think five hole in ones. But uh, you know they say that that's sometimes rarer. The albatross is sometimes rarer than getting a, a hole in one. So uh, got to give uh, props and shout out to my dad. A big that's day for awesome. him. That's awesome. Yeah. You know that's the one thing that would be that far of a shot. Maybe you maybe couldn't see it go in, and that's part of the beauty of the hole in ones on par threes. Is usually you can at least spot the hole and see the ball. Drop it into the cup, but that's amazing. He'll he uh, he'll need to keep that golf ball and put it up on a little shelf or something. Oh yeah, and um, he's uh, boy, he's proud of it. He texted me and my brother as soon as it happened. Uh, but yeah, uh, he is an, a great golfer. He golfs all the time. He's retirement, so um, I'm I'm happy for him. That was a big day for him. My winner is Tom Brady, and not because he led the Bucks to a late game rally, but after the game, New York Jets rookie defensive back Braden Eccles who intercepted a pass from Brady early in the game, took the football to Brady to have him autograph it. <laughs> and he did. I mean, come on. You come up, you pick off a pass, and then you want me to autograph it? But Brady did it and was a pretty good sport about the whole thing. So kudos to Tom Brady. That's a pretty good view of sportsmanship. You know, I think we see, we've seen a lot more of his personality come out over the last couple of years. You. Yes. Um, you know, I saw on TikTok, uh, Rob Gronk, Gronkowski, there's this thing going around where you FaceTime somebody, and then um, when they pick up, you're like, hey, I can't talk right now. Can I call you back? And so Gronkowski did that to Tom Brady, and it was just kind of a funny interaction. But you're just kind of seeing a little bit of his personality. He's kind of a, the Bill Belichick vibes up there in, in New England, and now he's kind of letting it loose a little bit. I agree with you. I think he's kind of loosened up. I think he knows he's kind of cemented his positioning in the all-time greats. And I think now it's just kind of like he knows he's on – he has to know, doesn't he, that he's on borrowed time? Oh, I mean, come yeah. Come on. Father Time's going to get him at. He's 44 years old. How much more can he go? You got to think he's just kind of maybe trying to soak it all in and enjoy it a little bit and have fun. I would think, yeah. Uh, Tim in Minnesota. Greg, I missed whenever you might have explained it previously. What do you have against the Steelers? How am I getting thrown into this thing? <laughs> I have nothing against the Steelers. You're the one throwing trash at the Steelers, Jessica. Tim's blaming me. I, I'm not. I've never really been a fan of the Steelers, but I also like to ag it on with our uh, guys back there in the back who are both big <laughs> Steelers fans. Well, Andrew is all over the place with his teams that he likes, by the way. Yeah, what, Duke, Steelers. I mean, Nebraska, I mean, it's like, I think he likes the Lakers. Yeah, he does. He's a Lakers guy. So it's, yeah. I mean, he just, it sounds like he just jumps on the bandwagon. Tim says, I, I've always been a Denver Bronco fan, so, uh, but there was a time that he hated. Tim, I don't, I don't hate the Steelers. I, I have really nothing against them. Jessica was throwing shade because uh, both Tim and Andrew are excited about Ben Roethlisberger playing his last game. What an amazing thing, and came out today that you, you look back, that, rec that year in the draft, you had Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers, Ben Roethlisberger, all in the same draft. That's a pretty good draft. Yeah, really good draft. And a kudos to, to uh, Jalen Hurts, too. Did you see the, yes. the fans fall over? Yes. And he helped them get up. He took pictures with them after that. That was scary. Yeah. I can only imagine, um, you know, walking through the tunnel and then... But that's kind of how Jalen is. I mean, he was really good the year that I worked with him at Oklahoma of you know doing stuff in the community and a lot of times he didn't even know about it but he would just uh, show up at a, at a school sometimes and just go read to kids and, and hang out with kids and a lot of it didn't get documented but he really does have a kind heart of, of giving back to uh to those in the community and in fans too that that cheer for him because you know a lot of people doubted him and so the fact that he's kind of getting so much love there i think he really appreciates that yeah that was cool scary for those fans hope they're okay and i'm told that the eagles really aren't kind of doing something for those fans they should my goodness that was a safety hey, thing yeah couldn't you like sue and... give them give them some season tickets for next year or something like that crazy all right that's gonna put a wrap on tonight show we we don't have a full show tomorrow night almost more than 90 minutes as we lead you into husker women's basketball tomorrow night we'll get you all fired up and ready for that game with comments from coach williams matt codney sam hybe all join us tomorrow night good night Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
This winter season, don't just get ready, drive ready with a new truck or SUV from Woodhouse. Easily tackle the snow-covered streets and holiday road trips with the whole family with our selection of the top truck and SUV brand lineups. Plus, our team is ready to get you the capability you need, the comfort you want, and the tech to keep the kids entertained. Visit one of our 17 locations and win the season with a new truck or SUV from Woodhouse. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to listen in on a transmission from Major Laura Stanton, the first person on Mars after a seven-month mission to the planet. Houston, do you read me? Uh, copy that, Major. Anything you need? Yeah, what were last night's Powerball numbers? With the starting jackpot in the millions in drawings Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, everybody wants to know about Powerball from the Nebraska Lottery. What's it look like there, Major? Red. Top prize odds, one in 292 million. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. Nebraska's new collaborative biosecurity lab is leading research to safeguard America's food supply against growing threats in partnership with the U.S. Departments of Defense and Homeland Security. The lab brings together world-leading expertise in agriculture and a deep understanding of the complexities of strategic deterrence across the threat spectrum and in multiple domains. Flu season is here, and you can get your flu shot now at your Hy-Vee Pharmacy. It's easy, convenient, and you can schedule your appointment online. Just go to hyvee.com slash myPharmacy. Plus, when you get your flu shot at Hy-Vee, you get a 20-cent Hy-Vee fuel saver. This year, it's more important than ever to stay healthy. So go online to hyvee.com slash myPharmacy today to 